Hey there, hope you're having a wonderful day. So in the previous video, we added a flying enemy called the blader. And I think at this point, we have most of the core features of our game completed. So now let's work on the actual map of our game. And for that, we need to introduce the concept of scrolling. And you might have heard of the term side scrolling. So basically, if I see even run the program to show you what we have so far, you can see we have all of our monsters and the metals can fire bullets and this helicopter monster called blader is moving around. But the thing is, we can only move within this box. So currently in our game, Mega Man is only able to walk around within the confines of the game window. And of course, if you want to make a bigger map, then we would have to make the window bigger. So that is not very practical because you would need a very large screen. So this is where the concept of scrolling comes in. So currently, when we move Mega Man around by pressing on the arrow keys, Mega Man is physically moving around. We are changing the X position and Y position to move Mega Man around. However, with the concept of scrolling, Mega Man does not need to physically move around. Instead, when we press on the arrow keys, everything else aside from Mega Man moves around. So let me show you what I mean by that. So here you can see we have this meme of Homer Simpsons and you can see he is walking to the left. But actually, if you look at it, he is just physically always in the center. The X and Y position never changes for Homer. Instead, what's happening is when he's moving to the left, everybody else, including the car, is moving to the right. So it simulates an effect of Homer moving to the left if everybody is shifting and moving to the right. So this is the idea we're going to be implementing within our game. So I'm going to scroll to our move function where we control the X position of the player. So let's scroll down. And within the move function, we implemented the concept of friction and velocity. In this case, I'm just going to comment this bit out. And I'm going to do the same here where we physically move the player X and where we check for tile collision. I'm going to comment this out as well. Now let's scroll down to our key inputs. And over here, when we press on the left arrow key or the A key, we give the player a velocity X, in this case, a negative velocity X to move to the left. I'm going to comment this out and I'll do the same for moving to the right. So now when we press on the left arrow key or the right arrow key, nothing will happen. So let's save and run the program. Okay, so I'm going to press the left arrow key, nothing happens. And right arrow key, nothing happens. The only thing that happens is Mega Man turns around and we update the image. But I can still jump because this is in the Y direction. So Mega Man is relatively centered. So what we're going to do is whenever we press on the left arrow key, instead of moving Mega Man to the left, everything else should move to the right. And this will simulate Mega Man moving to the left. And vice versa, if I press the right arrow key, everything else should move to the left, which would simulate Mega Man moving to the right. So I'm going to create a new function. So let's scroll up. And right above the move function, I'm going to create move underscore player x. And we're going to pass in a velocity x. And here I'm going to call another function called move map x. And we'll pass in the same velocity x. So let's define that function down here. And basically, I'm going to call it move player x and pass in a velocity x, which will then call this function. And this move map function will move everything on the map aside from the player. And for scrolling, I'm just going to focus on the x direction. You can add one for the y direction as well. But in most platforming games, we only focus on the x direction. Usually when you are making an overworld game like Zelda, you would be moving both cameras in horizontal and vertical direction, so X and Y. But platformers are usually one direction, which is moving left and right, okay? So here, I'm going to take this velocity X and apply it to all of the things in our game. So this includes tiles. So for tile in tiles, tile.x plus equal velocity X. And we also have the metal enemies. So for metal in metals, metal.x plus equal velocity x. And the metals might have bullets as well. So I will also take that into account for bullet in 
metal.bullets bullet.x plus equal velocity x. And we also have items. So for item in items, item.x plus equal velocity x. And finally, we have the bladers, which we introduced in the previous video. So for blader in bladers, blader.x plus equal velocity x. And now I'm going to call this move player x function. So let's go down to our key inputs. And over here, I'm going to do move player x. And instead of passing in negative player velocity x, which is for the player to move in the left direction, I'm going to pass in positive player velocity x. And the reason why we pass in positive is because this is going to move everything else but the player. So if we pass in positive, they're going to the right. So if everything is going to the right, it will simulate Mega Man going to the left. And likewise, if we want Mega Man to move to the right, everything else needs to move to the left. So here I'll do move player x, player velocity x, but remember, this has to be negative. So we're going to pass in a negative velocity, meaning everything on the map will move to the left, which will then simulate Mega Man moving to the right. All right, so let's save and run the program. All right, so if I press the left arrow key, you can see everything else moves to the right. And if I press the right arrow key, everything else moves to the left. And you can see there's an issue with this blader monster. And that is because we give it a limit on how much it can move from its starting x and y position. Now, when we add the velocity x, we are bypassing that and forcing the blader to move past its limit. So currently it's past its limit when it should be somewhere over here on the map. And therefore it's constantly reversing course. So it's going back and forth instantly. So we need to adjust the starting x position as well. So here the blader class has a start x. And when we change the x position, the x position is no longer relative to the start x. So we want to make sure that the difference between the x and start x remain consistent. So let's go back to our move map function. And within our move map x function, I'm going to do blader dot start x plus equal velocity x. So now when we add velocity x to both start x and x, there's going to be no change. So start x will be relative to x. So if I go to the move function, now blader.x and blader.startx move together. So basically, if this increases, this will also increase at the same rate. And since we're subtracting, we are already subtracting the velocity x that we're moving with. Therefore, the velocity x that we add to move the map will not affect the difference between the updated x position and the starting x position of the blader. Okay, so now let's save and run the program. All right, so the blader is moving. And now if I move to the right and then left, you can see the blader is not affected. Now let's add some more tiles over here so we can actually walk some more. So let's go to our create map function. And over here, instead of 16, I'll make it 50 just so we can walk a lot more. All right, let's save and run the program. All right, so we have the monsters and I can walk to the right. And now we are away from them. And if I walk back to the left side, the monsters and everything will still be there. Okay. And I can fire bullets. Okay. And there's one issue, and that is we don't have collision detection with the exposition. So now Mega Man can walk through this wall. So we need to check for that. So we have this check tile collision and we have check tile collision X. Basically, if we have a collision, then we are just going to force the character to stick to the wall, whether it's the left side or the right side of the wall. Now, instead of doing this, I'm going to handle the collision detection another way. Basically, we are still going to check for collisions with the tiles. So the idea is going to be over here, we are going to take a step forward and I'm going to do tile is equal to check tile collision of player. So we're going to take a step forward and then we're going to check. After moving everything on the map, is there a collision with a tile? If there is a collision with the tile, then we're going to take a step back. So here I'll do if tile is not none, 
move map x and here we're going to move everything back so to do so we'll do negative velocity x okay so if the player wants to move to the left we're going to have a positive velocity x and if the player wants to move to the right we're going to have a negative velocity x so basically everything on the map moves forward we check to see if this causes the player to collide with a tile if so then we move everything on the map back okay so let's save and run the program all right, so actually, let's destroy the metals to see if we can get some items. Okay, we have one item. We have another item. Wow, we have three items. Okay, so now if I go to the right and I go back, you can see the items move away from us. And if I go back, the items are there. Okay, and let's just destroy this blader. Okay, so the item's there. All right, so now let's test the collision in the x direction. And you can see we are not able to go through the wall. And let's try the other side. And you can see we are also unable to go through the wall from this side. Okay, so we have collision detection fixed in the x direction. And of course, in the y direction, nothing changes because in the y direction, Mega Man is physically going up and down. Whereas in the x direction, Mega Man stays in the same x position, but everything else moves. Okay. All right, so that's it for this video. This is scrolling. And in the next video, we're going to actually create a complete map. And we're going to do so by using something called a tile map. So in the next video, I'll show you how that works so that we can create a nice map for our game. And because we have all the features already implemented, we just need to create instances of tiles, metals, bullets, items, bladers, spikes. So we have everything implemented. In the next video, all we have to do is just create a map. And it will actually be a lot simpler than what you might expect, okay? So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found this video helpful. And if you did, make sure you give this video a like. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments. And if you want to stay up to date for more Python game programming tutorials like this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.